What's going on guys? Welcome to your 33rd Android tutorial. Again with me, Travis, from my bring back. What we're going to do in this tutorial is we're just going to do an overview or a review of what we've done with this uh, Surface View example. Because eventually, or probably the next tutorial I'm going to do is with sprite sheets and working with sprites because I've got a lot of requests with that. But feel free to skip this uh, tutorial if you guys know um, everything that we've done so far, you aren't too confused. But let's just quickly talk about what we've done. We created a Surface View example class, which is our activity. It also implements on touch listener so we can listen to touch events and motion events. We set up a view of some sort, um, a variable called our view. This is a class that we defined. We also set up a bitmap that's going to be our ball and the x and y value of our ball, where it's going to be drawn onto our canvas. Then our onCreate method gets called, you know, just calls to the superclass, all that good stuff. Then we set up that view. Again, this is the view that we defined, uh, which we'll get to in a second. And we also said uh, set an onTouch listener so that view uh, processes touch events. We also set up our bitmap to our resource that we included in our resource folder, and we set the initial x and y values to be zero. Then all we did is we set the content view to our specific or our customized view. Uh, again, we called it v. We have an on pause method and on resume method uh, that comes from our activity class and uh, we'll get to that in a second. So now let's go down to our custom view that we created called our view which again extends surface view because that's what we're working with. Uh, it's a little bit better than the view because it works on a different thread which we implement here. Um, we're saying implements runnable which basically implements the run method uh, of the thread class. So then what we do is we set up a thread, we set this thread to be nothing or null, it's pretty much empty when this view is created, and we also set up a surface holder, um, and we also set up a boolean value to check if our thread is running or not. Then this is our constructor, again this gets called when our view, uh, when we create an our view object, and then all we do is we set our holder equal to get the holder of our current view or surface view, so we can kind of work with it, you know, everything's cool. And again, we created uh, a thread that handles our graphics and our physics and all that good stuff because we don't want our activity class handling all of that stuff. This kind of sets up more than one thread so those threads can do different things and just focus on them. Again, uh, this thread that we implement here uh, basically is going to hold our graphics and all that good stuff. So again, we have the thread and the thread calls the run method which checks if our, our variable um, our boolean value is true. Um, again, we could just you know do something like this as well because that returns a true or false value. So if it is true, then what we're going to say is if the surface of our holder is not valid, then we're going to continue, which just basically means it's going to skip everything below and start looping through again. Um, it's going to skip the code below until our surface becomes valid or our holder becomes valid. Then what we're going to do is we're going to lock the canvas because again anytime we draw the canvas we want to lock it first, paint to it, and then unlock it and display it. So we have this canvas, uh, we lock it, and then we draw the canvas, kind of the background color, and then it draws our ball. Again, uh, basically in the position of the x and the y value, and we divide it by half the width so it's more centered. Um, again, the x and y value are initially zero so it'll be in the top left corner of our screen. Then all we're going to do is unlock and post uh, the information that we just drew to our canvas. So that's what a run method will do, as long as this boolean value is set to true. Again, we initially set it to be false, but once this on resume method gets called, it uh, sets that boolean value to true, it sets our thread equal to be a new thread, which is this, which again we'll call the run method that we just discussed. And then we just start that thread as well. Again, this resume method gets called up here uh, within our activity on resume method here. We call our view and then uh, and we call that resume method I just discussed. So again this gets called after our on create method gets called within our activity class. So all the on pause method will do is basically say hey um, we're gonna set that boolean value to be false and while this is true, which is always going to be true, um, we're going to try and end our thread, join it, and uh, then set our thread equal to be null again, or nothing. Again, this will be um, this method gets called 
within our on pause method of our activity again. So if we get a phone call, text message, something like that. Not text message, but uh, you know, if our activity goes on pause for some reason. Again, so it just kind of clears out our thread. And then all we have left is our on touch method, which again, our view, we set the on touch listener. Um, so it processes these on touch methods. Uh, or it processes this on touch method, which again we get a view and a motion event. Again, we have different types of motion events, um, but we'll get to that in a second. All we did here is we slept for 50 seconds or 50 milliseconds, I should say, because we don't want to update as quickly as possible because again, it might hurt some processing speed. So we just kind of slowed it down. 20 times a second is pretty good. Uh, we'll just stick with that for now. So again, that's all that sleep method does. You should be pretty familiar with that. And again, every time we touch the screen, this onTouch method gets called because, again, our view can handle, again, the touch methods, which has different motion events. We have different types of motion events, such as down, up, and move around when our finger is still on the screen and we're moving. So all we're doing is we're getting that action uh, within our switching case here. And if the action is down, we're setting the X and Y value uh, of our ball, again, to equal wherever it's being touched down and also being touched up and also anytime we move. So it's just updating those X and Y values and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's how our surface view works and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Uh, hopefully that makes more sense. If not, um, I'm sorry, but uh, thanks again for watching. Have a good one.